Hi, my name is Emily. I am a senior in high school. Today I would like to show you how easy it is to install the butler on a loft frame and moxie machine. To get started, let's go over the parts that you should have received in the frame kit. These are all the parts that you should have received in your kit. This is the bracket that is used to mount the butler to your quilting frame carriage. This bracket is mounted on the front of the carriage. This is the idler bracket. It mounts on the back of the carriage and helps to keep the black motor belt in line. This is the carriage wide bracket. This bracket connects directly onto the Moxie quilting machine. With this bracket, the robot can pull the machine forward and push it backward. This is the quick release for the carriage Y bracket. This part allows us to quickly engage and disengage from the machine the belt that controls the forward and backward motion. The Y belt connects all of the brackets that are used in the forward and backward motion of the machine. This belt will connect around the butler's top pulley, the idler pulley on the idler bracket, and the quick release for the carriage Y bracket. These are the brackets that hold the X belt to the frame. These brackets simply clamp onto the frame and are easily adjusted into position. The belt anchor is attached to the X brackets forming a solid anchoring point for the X belt. The X belt is used for the side to side motion of the machine. It connects to each of the X bracket anchors that are installed on opposite sides to the frame. The butler engages a pulley against this belt to move side to side. This bracket is for mounting the butler's touchscreen display to your Moxie. This puts your work right in front of you at a comfortable eye level. The butler also ships with all needed cables, modules, and an assortment of items that are used for cable management. These are things like base anchors and zip ties that will help keep your installation looking clean and tidy. Lastly, there are some standard tools that you will need for this installation. You will need the Allen wrenches that came with your loft frame, a number two Phillips screwdriver, and a good pair of wire snips. Now that you are familiar with all the parts and tools that we will be using, let's get on with the installation. Here is a list of all the things that we will cover and the times that they occur in this video. If you want, you can go to each of the times listed here to review each procedure. Now we will show you how to install the butler robot mounting bracket onto the loft carriage. To make the installation a little easier, we have taken the moxie off the quilting frame and set it aside. We have also taken the carriage off the frame and put it upside down on this table. We will mount the butler robot mounting bracket on the front of the carriage using these existing screws. Let's start by removing these screws. The butler robot mounting bracket has mounting holes that match with the holes where the screws go. Line the bracket up with the holes. Make sure the U-shaped cutout on the bracket is closest to the edge of the carriage where the stitching encoder rides. If the carriage is right side up and you are facing it from the front, that would be the left hand side. Using the same screws that you removed from the carriage, you may now attach the bracket. Be sure not to over tighten the screws. The Butler robot mounting bracket is now in place. Next, we will install the idler bracket. We still have the loft carriage in the same position that it was in for installing the butler robot mounting bracket. We will pretty much do the same thing that we did for the butler robot mounting bracket, just on the opposite end of the carriage. To get started, take out these four screws just like we did for the previous bracket. Now 
line up the idler bracket with those four holes. Since we have the carriage upside down, make sure that the belt pulley is facing down. The belt pulley should also be closest to the edge of the carriage where the encoder rides. Now let's attach the bracket to the carriage with the four original screws. The idler bracket is now installed. All the brackets have been attached to the bottom of the frame carriage. Now we will attach the carriage Y bracket to the bottom of the Moxie. To make this easier, we have set the Moxie upside down on our table here. Depending on what table you might use, we would suggest placing a bath towel or some other soft surface between the Moxie and the table. This will help to prevent scuffing on both the machine and the surface you place it on. To install the carriage Y bracket, we will need to remove these screws. These screws work fine for what they are currently doing. However, they cannot be used to attach the carriage Y bracket. Go ahead and take these screws off and put them in a safe place. For this part of the installation, we will be using these M3 by 10 millimeter screws. To install the bracket, line up the mounting holes with the location where the old screws were and use the new screws that have been supplied to attach the bracket. Make sure that the part of the bracket that extends from the machine points toward the back. Now we can move on to the next step. Now that we have all brackets attached to the machine and the carriage for the front to back motion, we can put the carriage and the moxie back on the frame. When doing so, be sure to run the encoder wire through this hole in the idler plate. The black belt can now be attached to the carriage. First, we will attach the Y quick release to the black belt. It is easiest if we attach it to the forward part of the quick release. When holding the quick release plate with your left hand, make sure the cutout is to the left of the alignment hole. Holding the black belt with your right hand, teeth facing down, feed the belt down through the innermost slot on the right side of the plate. Then feed the black belt up through the next slot to the right. Make it so there is about a one and a half inch tail that comes up through the, that hole and pull everything tight. Notice how when we pull the bracket and the belt in a straight line, the belt cinches up and locks. To make sure that this stays in place, we will put a zip tie around the belt about a quarter of an inch away from the bracket. Install the robot on the robot mounting bracket using the included M5 by 10 millimeter screws. Now we attach the quick release plate to the carriage Y bracket. In this position, the teeth of the belt should be facing the underside of the machine. Feed the belt up around the robot Y pulley, around the idler pulley, and through the slots on the quick release plate. Make sure you feed the belt through the innermost slot first, from the outside of the plate, underneath the machine, and then back out again. Pull as much as you can of the belt through these slots. The belt should be slightly loose around the pulleys. To tighten the belt, we will pull the innermost pulley back and screw it down tight. Place a zip tie around the two parts of the belt that you ran through the quick release plate and use your wire snips to cut the belt so that there is only about a one and a half inch tail. The robot is now hooked up to control the Y axis or the front to back motion. Next, we will install the X-belt brackets. To place the X-belt bracket, turn the flat piece on the back so it is perpendicular with the C-shaped plate on the front. Place the C-plate over the lips on the loft frame, turn the flat plate parallel with the C-plate, and tighten the middle screw 
finger tight. Attach the X-belt brackets on both sides of the frame in the same manner. Now that the X-belt brackets are loosely placed, we will install the X-belt. First, we will attach the X-belt or white belt to the belt anchor on the left side of the frame. Move the X-belt bracket about four inches from the front roller track. Holding the belt with the teeth facing up, run the belt up through the inner slot and back down through the outer slot of the belt anchor. Give yourself about an inch and a half tail and zip tie this like we did with the Y belt. Now, stretch out the X belt all along the length of the frame. Make sure that there are no twists in it. Place the X belt bracket on the other side of the frame about four inches from the front roller track, just like we did with the first one, and feed the belt through the same way. Loosen up the screw on the belt anchor about a half an inch and feed the belt through the slots in the anchor until the belt droops about two or three inches in the center. Run the belt between the X pulley and bearings on the robot. Engage the X belt quick release. Now that the X belt is loosely set and engaged with the robot, we will align the belt and tighten it up. Move the moxie on the carriage all the way over to the left hand side of the frame. Line up the X bracket and pulley on the robot so that the belt is straight. Tighten up the X belt bracket so that it stays put. Now move the machine to the other side and do the same there. With the belt aligned, we can now tighten it up. Move the machine to the center of the frame, working at the X belt bracket where we loosen the belt anchor, pull the belt through the slots until it is mostly tight. Finish tensioning the belt by screwing down the belt anchor. To get the right tension, you may have to loosen the belt anchor a bit Adjust the belt in the slots and then tighten the belt anchor screw again. The belt anchor screw should be fully tightened into the X belt anchor. If this is allowed to flop, the system won't work right. With that all done, we now have both the Y belt system and the X belt systems attached. Almost done! In order to use the butler, we need to place its control surface somewhere convenient. On the top of your Moxie, you will find three M4 screw holes. This is where we will attach the display bracket base. Line up the bracket holes and the holes in the Moxie, and using the supplied screws, screw them together. Place the tablet clamp onto the display bracket like so. Now place the tablet into the tablet clamp. We are ready to start running the power and the communication cables. Now that we have all of the hardware attached, we are ready to run the power and the communication cables. Plug in your butler's power cable in here. Do not yet plug that into the wall. With the tablet fully shut down, plug in the Butler Direct Connect cable into the tablet using the micro USB connector and the small DC power plug. Drape the Direct Connect cable around the back of your machine and then run it up along the right side of your carriage. Plug the Direct Connect cable, micro USB connector, and large DC plug into the Butler. Plug the supplied Moxie handlebar cable into the Butler. Run this cable to the back of the machine along the same path that you ran the direct connect cable. On the back of your Moxie, there is a printed circuit board that may be covered by a thin piece of plastic. For the next part, make sure that you are electrically grounded. Remove the two M3 screws that hold the printed circuit board into the machine and gently pull the board away from the machine, exposing the connector on the other side. Unplug this printed circuit board and replace it with the handlebar module that is provided in your kit. 
Everything is basically identical and will plug back in the same way it came off. Using the screws that held on the previous printed circuit board, attach this new one. Plug the handlebar cable into the handlebar module. With all of the cables run, now we can do a little cable management. Next, plug your butler into AC power. It is strongly advised that you do this through a battery backup. Thanks for watching this presentation on how to attach the butler to your loft frame and Moxie long arm quilting machine. If you have any questions about this installation or if you need further assistance with your installation, please contact your authorized dealer. Thank you.